Yeah, he took a couple hits of it. He needed to talk to somebody was what it was, and I told him, if he comes here looking for somebody to smoke with, he's going to find somebody that's going to give him, like, something to fuck him up, try to rob him, not care without, you know? Like, that happens all the time here. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't know how much you pay attention. There's a lot of people that were hanging around here last year, the year before. They're fucking dead from overdoses. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's, it's fucked up Yeah, they stopped, they stopped letting us know when people die. I, when I first moved in here, they used to put notices in the lobby when people die of a memorial sort of poster. Oh, oh they, they do that? No, 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 hold on. They do that for regular ass people that aren't dickheads destroying the place. They do that. All these random idiots causing trouble here don't fucking live here. Even when they're in somebody's house, they don't fucking live here. They're, stay, they're, they're fucking squatting somebody's house. Like, yeah, you know how, that's how crack houses start, bro. You got three, you, you got no money, but three people have fuck. oh, we got some rock, let us stay here. Then they start having idiots come over to do stuff. Oh, yeah. You end up going to jail and fucking marrying your house for six months and shit. That's what happens to people. Oh, yeah. Lots of trouble comes from the shelter, eh? <laughs> uh, not really. Not really. Not from what I've seen. Maybe the odd one has, but the, uh, from what I've seen, you know, those people over there don't mix over here. Oh, yeah, fuck. From what I've seen, because if you're in a shelter and you come sit on this corner for a day, you're going to get mixed up with somebody that's going to get you fucked up enough not to be allowed back in the shelter. If you're drunk and fucked up on crack, they'll tell you to fuck oh, up. Oh, yeah, fuck. So, most people don't even realize it's a shelter, bro. Or like, it's not. Oh, it's, 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 it's the nicest shelter, shelter I've seen in my life, man. You walk in there? I nice. did. I walked in there once. Cause Paradise, man. I only walked in there once. And the strangest thing, I swear, I get the strangest reactions from there's a woman sitting that there. inside there's like this glass thing whatever I asked if I could just leave a message for somebody that told me they live here that's all I want to do okay I owed him two bucks for coffee or some weirdo shit like that the guy standing up doesn't think nothing of me being there the woman starts flip like like uh, she says something weird and I can't I think I forget what it is now I'm like excuse me she's like blah 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 I'm sorry did I like did I go in the wrong door like wrong door she's like yeah it's that way I'm like I look back, she's pointing out the door, I just came in like telling me to fuck off in her own way. I'm like, what the fuck? The guy's, the guy's looking at her weird now, looking at me weird now. I was like, I just wanted to leave a message for somebody that told me they lived here. I'm like, what are you upset at me for? And it's an open courtyard, you can walk right in. Like anybody could wander oh, yeah. in there not realizing, you know, <laughs> it's like government employees and shit. The woman had the strangest reaction. I get the strangest reactions from people, and, I, and sometimes I don't know why. That's what the body cam's for. <laughs> it's precisely. Capture that shit for the fuck. Because it can't just be like, I don't know what it is they think. Or like, I don't, like, it's one of those things where I can't know what somebody said to them to have a prejudice against me. Yeah. Because I make a point, like, if I'm going... You are to, tall, you're probably intimidating or something. Yeah, if, if I come up, if, no, see, the thing is with big people, we know we can, like, it's, no, we can accidentally knock people over and shit that are old or short. So we purposely try to come across more like the big gentle teddy, but we purposely try to be like, like if I turn and almost call you six four, two six two. But Dutch people on have no these these the boots I wear have thick oh, thick yeah. soles. Dutch people on uh, the Dutch men are the tallest on average in the world, six foot eight. So everybody thinks I'm tall. At oh six, really? At six foot two, they think I'm tall, but I'm six inches shorter than average for my people. Oh, yeah. You got your giants. Now, now 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 the crazy part is my dad it was like six one. Like, I forget if it's 6'1 or 6'2, like, the same height as me now. So, you look fucking Dutch. <laughs> yeah, outwardly, yeah. And this, the, all the hypo, that's Afro Dutch. Afro Dutch goes back 400 years at least. It's documented at least 400 years. Oh, you're a fucking Toronto fucking mutt. <laughs> no. What's not, well, you, uh, you, I mean, if, if you don't need, if you don't mean nothing by it, yeah, that's, yeah. you could use that you, word. You're either a purebred or a mutt, you know? No, There's I'm not like, many purebreds no. nowadays. Dutch royal family, I'm black on both sides. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. But uh, that goes back 400 years or more. Rembrandt Dutch, best painter ever. He, uh, was he the one that did he cut off his ear? or Did he shoot himself? No, that's Van Gogh. He shot himself, right? Rembrandt's the one that had a gun. Now this is what I'm talking about. People tell me like, oh, this is some new violent thing. You got to get out of this whole thing. It's bad. What's wrong with you? And I think to myself, 400 years ago, the most, the person you look up to the most for painting from my country had a gun. And you're oh, telling yeah. me gun violence is new. It's not new to me. Yeah, exactly. Go back 300, 400, 500 years and the British were shooting at us. And we happened to have guns too because we, they thought we would kill each other. And oh, everybody yeah. had guns. Oh, this is new. This is new. Apparently, I was looking this. I was watching this on YouTube. Apparently, the first like they call it a machine gun, technically, is like 1720s. Holy fuck! Now it's not anything like you would use today, but it could fire relatively quick. Instead of the five minutes of cleaning the gun and repeat, 
it, it had like this rotating assembly or something. It's it's like old as fuck, but it could shoot like eight shots in a row. Oh, well, sir, so I bet you they had it on ships or something. It was on, uh, I think it was, uh, you know Simon Whistler, Infographics? He's got like 10 different channels. Simon Whistler, uh, Infographics, Biographics. Uh, he's got, now he's got like a dozen different channels. Into the Shadows is one of them. Oh, yeah. He's got a bunch of them. I don't know if those are all, like, infographics might be a different one. They, they, they basically, he's the narrator. They got people working on the stories, and people writing the script, and people working on the video, and he's, he, he brings it to being a person on the screen telling you about it. So he sometimes he doesn't know the script at all. He'll be like, I, I haven't read this yet. He'll get to a thing and go, oh, God. That I guess it's probably fucking huge, then. Huh? That gun's probably huge. Well, all the guns back then were huge. Fuck. Listen, it's, oh. it's sort of a psychological thing. When I was about three years old, my uncle, in his room, there were about a dozen rifles. Because this wasn't a thing back then. My, my grandfather served in the Canadian Forces. Oh, yeah? And all the rules and everything were very different back then compared to today. And I, I sort of wandered into his bedroom. And I guess I must have said, what's this? Or something like, what are those? And they're like, oh, those are guns. But don't worry. The fire, he's lighting his hash pipe. Don't worry. The firing pins are all removed, so we can't get in trouble for it. So, oh, okay. I'm three years old, not thinking nothing of this. Oh, yeah. That's normal to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah. You were raised did. around that shit. Oh, yeah. It, no, listen, my grandfather. So, we had a shop at 1038 Queen West. So, if you know where the, if you know where 1001 Queen is, on the other side of the street, there's a, there used to be a, I was about to say it's where the Legion is, but the Legion's been closed for years. There used to be a Royal Canadian Legion there. It's gone now. A gun so. shop? What kind of shop? No, 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 no. We had a used appliances and things. We had a shop. Like we had, we, we owned the building. All right. If you can imagine, the place cost like sixty grand, eighty grand. Oh fuck! Fully, For Queen Street real real estate retail. They still had it, man. Fuck. Uh, do you know how many times I've said that? The amount of money that's gone through my family's hands is ridiculous because my uncles used to get two hundred bucks a day each just for doing deliveries. Because my grandmother would be in the shop while they selling stuff. They would get 20 but they would charge 20 bucks to deliver it. So my two uncles were basically 10 bucks a piece, but they're doing 10 or 20 deliveries every day. They would go down to the Zanzibar, spell it, spend it all at the strip club and on booze and coke. Oh fuck. Like what the fuck? And then they, they did this selling the property I bet, eh? Well, my grandmother got fed. Everybody got fed up and spread like 120 grand. No, this is crazy, bro. Everybody worth two million now. Everybody I know it's worth two million. It's literally because they put two properties together now. Oh, but the story, the the the, the funnier, the better story. One day my grandfather comes back from wherever he was up north. He he used to go all the way down to Mexico and back. And the crazy part is he did not have his American citizenship because he when he signed up to go to Korea, he did it in Canada. He got a letter later on saying you're no longer considered a US citizen because you served in the armed forces of a foreign nation. Oh shit. He was 16. That decision could have fucked his whole life up. Somehow it didn't. He got to drive all the way to Mexico and back all the time. He didn't they, they never bothered. He used to scrap Model T's, bro. When the Model A came out, all these rich people with their nice houses, remember, they parked their cars outside so you can see them. Now they got the Model A sitting next to a Model T. They're like, what the fuck do we do with this Model T? The things run forever, so there was nothing to sell it. Oh, yeah. My grandfather driving around with an old tow truck. Hey, I'll take that off your hands. Go scrap. He said he scrapped hundreds of them, bro. Two, three, four hundred of those things. Oh, fuck. He was telling us that story. The guy sitting there said, oh, fuck, don't tell me that. I'm going to cry. Those are worth a lot now, too. Because he scrapped so many of them, basically. But he comes What's the Model T again? A Thunderbird? No, no, no. The first one from Ford, the Henry Ford okay, Model yeah. T, where you crank it, and oh. if, you, if, if you see a cartoon with a car, it would really be worth a lot of money. No though. shit, bro. I don't know how many are left in the world, but there's not that many. Like, there's pro like, there's no, like, I'm sure there's a few, but there's not that many yeah. of these things. Okay, fuck it. Wow. So he parts his truck. The first thing in the morning, it's basically where there used to be a wall around the uh, Queens, the mental hospital. Yeah. Now it's all open. There's tennis courts there. We're directly across from the tennis courts. He parks his truck, puts his rifle over his shoulder, walks up to the door. Goes in the shop, goes to bed. The cops show up like fucking, like this is before ETF and gang units and all this shit. It's back in the 80s or maybe, it had to be the mid 80s. These are the things they didn't tell me happened if I wasn't there to see it because I was little. So there are all these secrets where they start a conversation. I go, I'd look up and they'd all change the subject real fast for certain things and I didn't know why back then, but there's lots of shit I learned later. Fucking, oh fuck, there was another one too. Uh, there was so many fucked up stories. There was uh, he, yeah, I think I told you he talked himself out of a DUI. He was driving on the highway oh, uh, yeah. number seven or something like that, but he had lumber in the back. And he didn't have a red thing hanging off the back? He did, but he didn't anymore. It fell off. The cops pull him over and say, hey, you're supposed to have a little red flag on that lumber. 
Yeah. I don't I don't know. When I was a kid, they told us not to stand so close to the curb, so I don't know what to tell people. I see it all the time. Oh, yeah. I see that all the fucking yeah, time. Yeah, he, he said he was intoxicated, right? 